What is up, everybody, and welcome to the show. Welcome to episode five of the Whatever I Find Entertaining podcast. I'm your host, as usual, Diesel, and I'd just like to welcome y'all and say, how y'all doing today? I hope everything's going phenomenal. Hope everything's going as great as it possibly can, because you know I only love me when y'all love yourselves. So first off, well, we got we got a jam packed show here today. We're gonna touch on our usual topics, but we also gonna touch on the Loki trailer that just dropped a few days ago. We gotta talk about the Space Jam Two trailer. We gotta talk about the Without Remorse trailer. We gotta talk about Mortal Kombat. I don't think they got a new trailer, but it is right around the corner, so we're gonna touch on that. What else we gonna talk about? Uh, My Hero, My Hero Academia season five is underway, uh, and we're gonna talk about. Lil Nas X. Yeah. We're gonna fill our we're gonna fill our, our, our music quota today. We don't usually get our music quota filled on the show, but we're gonna get it filled today. But first on a um I guess on a more somber note, I just wanna say rest in peace to one of the greatest. Uh you know, one of the one of the most misunderstood, one of the probably most well loved of all rappers that's come around in a long time. And that's that's the Dark Man Extreme himself, uh DMX. He uh at the time of recording this, he passed away earlier today and it it, it yeah I know I like to I like to keep things light, easy breezy on the show, but I was a huge DMX fan, and um, it it just really sucks to know that he had been fighting a a battle for so long, and then he finally lost to it. Cause with him, I mean, if you know his music, it's always been a he's always been fighting something. I mean, I just always assumed it was like inner demons and. You know, him being a man of God, he's always fighting the devil like any any man or woman of God is. I just recently learned that, you know, he was it was actually drug addiction he was fighting. And it was... I, he was tricked into it at, I believe, 14. He was given cocaine or crack. I don't remember which one. But, I mean, either one to a 14-year-old is you're just dooming him. You're just... I mean, those drugs bring down a powerful adults. I don't know what a fourteen year how a fourteen year old kid's supposed to handle that, or why you would do that to a child. But yeah, it just it just sucks. I mean, I've I've been a lifelong DMX fan. DMX was, I mean, I don't know if a lot of people know this about me, but um, Eminem's my favorite rapper. But before Eminem was ever my favorite rapper. Busta Rhymes was my favorite before Eminem, but before Busta Rhymes, it was DMX. Uh, DMX was my first ever favorite rapper, and he he holds a special place in my heart because it was like, and I don't want to I don't want to dwell on this too long because I don't want this to bring down the energy to show. I just want to pay I just want to pay my respects on what little platform I have. But he was DMX was the first rapper. One of the earliest rappers I can remember my dad listening to. And uh, my dad does have a lot of, I don't know, I, I guess he has a lot of influence on my current taste in rap. Because he was, um, we, he was a lot into, he was, he was into a lot of Southern rappers. He listened to a lot of Goody Mob and Scarface and uh, Outkast and stuff like that when I was growing up with him. Um, but DMX is one of the, he didn't listen to, he didn't listen to a lot of East Coast, but DMX is one of the East Coast rappers he listened to. He he really messed with. And, um, it just, I don't know. I, I think that's, I think that's, I think that's enough. I just, I just want to pay respects 
and just send blessings out to his friends and his family because I know they lost somebody super important to him. I mean, he's super important to me, and I never even met the guy, so I can just only imagine. I could just only imagine what it's like losing somebody that I just, oof. I mean, we've lost a lot of people. I mean, everybody loses people. That's life. And just, it seems like just within the past couple of years, we've lost just like a lot of just legendary people. And this is definitely hitting me harder than any of them. I, I, yeah, this really, it just really sucks. I, I kind of, to be honest with you, and I'm, 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 I'm done. I'm done. We're going to. We're going to definitely switch the mood here. But um, honestly, I had something I was going to drop today. But um, I decided not to. It's a music thing I was going to do. And I decided not to. Just out of respect for him. So I'll probably do that next week. And uh, yeah, I guess that it. Just... R.I.P. Man, like your your fight done. Just enjoy your time in heaven now, bro. It's <sighs> anyway. Transitioning, uh, sticking in the world of music and slightly in the world of hip hop, if you want to say so. Uh... Yeah, we're gonna get into. <sighs> we'll get to Lil Nas X and his reaching, reaching. His recent controversy with his new song and video and his shoe deal thing. I um I gotta admit I don't fully understand the shoe thing. But apparently, uh he he had a deal with a company, um, Misfit. And they like make customized shoes, I guess. And so they made him some customized Nikes, uh Air Max, I think. They made him some customized Air Max. And I guess Nike's usually cool with this thing. With this type of thing, because they they said they misfit had did it before, but Lil Nas X for some reason decided to make these super demonic because he has a song that's to be honest with you, the song's not even all that demonic. It's it's the song's just like a regular Lil Nas X song. It's I mean the lyrics itself were nothing like too. This is what lyrics sound like today. It wasn't nothing too out of the blue. But he, uh, the 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 visual concept of the video is what was like, whoo! Because if he never released a video for this, it wouldn't even be all that big of a big of a deal. Because unless I was just missing something in the lyrics and they're deeper than I thought they were, it, it really wasn't all that like controversial. But the video and. One thing about Lil Nas is, like, I'm not going to sit here and act like I've been following his career all that much. I like Old Town Road as much as the next guy. But uh, I, I can't really say. I, I listened to his first album. I think it was called 7 EP or something like that. It was cool. It wasn't nothing like groundbreaking or anything, but it was cool. He definitely shed that whole Old Town Road image really quick, which is what you got to do when you come out the gate with a major, major, extremely huge hit. You gotta really, you gotta break away from that as soon as you can, or you ain't gonna never have a career. So he did that, but uh, his music now is just, I mean, I don't, I don't know. One of, the, one of the controversies I had seen, which is how I found out about this video, is that people were like, they were saying he was marketing demonic stuff to kids. And I'm like, I didn't realize uh, that kids were his primary audience. I mean, I get the Old Town Road thing was kind of a kid thing. It's kind of a kids bop type joint. But, I mean, a lot of his lyrics deal with, like, relationship stuff and sex and stuff. So, I'm like, I didn't, I don't know. I didn't know what his major audience was. I ain't pretending to know. I, I, it's not me. I'm not his demographic. So, I don't know what his demographic is. But, with this one, like I said, the lyrics wasn't all that bad. But, if you watch the video, and I will say this. Lil Nas X's videos, usually they have weird as, and I don't mean weird in a bad way. I just mean weird as in like way different than normal. Weird as uh, visual concepts. 
Uh, he's always in crazy. It kind of reminds me of a young Buster Rhymes. Not in skill level, so calm down before you uh, unsubscribe to the podcast and send shitty comments to me on my social medias. These are the great uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram, YouTube, all that. Before you send me any uh, negative negative messages, I just mean like when I say it reminds me of Buster Rhymes, Buster Rhymes, at least young Buster Rhymes. I don't know. I haven't seen a Buster Rhymes video in a while. But his videos were just crazy. There was all these weird ass visual effects and weird ass camera work and he always had on costumes and stuff. So that's kind of how Lil Nas X videos are. But the, And this one wasn't any different. It was weird as hell. Weird color schemes, weird costumes, weird makeup. It was weird like his stuff normally is. But then he, um, how do I explain this? Towards the end of the video, a giant, I can only describe it as a giant stripper pole comes out of the ground and he straddles it in a very stripper-like fashion and rides it down to hell where he sees Satan and I kid you not, I could not make this up even if I wanted to. Proceeds to give the devil, Satan himself, a lap dance. And not a real, like, you ever been to a strip club? Like a real lap dance, bro. Like, this is not no, not no PG-13 comedy lap dance. Like a real one. He grinding all up on him, twerking on him. It was... It was real weird, bro. It was... I don't know. It was... I ain't really got no words for it, bro. It was... It was real... It was real weird. It was kind of like... Where you going with this, buddy? Well, what's... What are you... What are you trying to say with this? What's the... Um, well, what's the point? Like, what... What's... <laughs> it was like... I just like who's the audience like who are you targeting this for like who who are you where are you going like I don't get it like like there was nothing in the song about doing anything with the unless I just missed it if I missed it then by all means send me the lyrics I missed it where he was talking about anything that got to anything to do with hell or um, Satan or lap dances or pole riding anything this song got to do with that send it to me Send it to me on twitter.com backslash these are the great. Um, send it to me, bro. Because if I, if I missed it, then I missed it. I'll admit it. But I don't think I missed nothing there, bro. I think they would. It just came out of nowhere and it was really weird. And then at the end, he ended up, like at the end of the song or at the end of the video, he ended up snapping the Satan's neck and then putting his crown on and then he grew wings. And then that was the end of the video. It's like. But like what though? But huh? And that was it. So um, with the release of this song and video, he released these these Air Max, these customized Air Max, uh, where there was six hundred and sixty six pairs released, um, and they were super safe. They got like upside down crosses. They're black and red. Uh, there's supposedly some blood in the human blood in the bottom of them, and it's just a bunch of antichrist stuff on it. And it's just like, I guess, bro, it's just like your thing. Are you like the antichrist musician now? I don't. I guess I don't really care. So do your thing, but I don't know how that's some. I don't know how you. That's a marketable thing. Like, I don't know how you gonna. I'm not saying that there's not a market for that, but it's like. How you make that mainstream though? Unless you like a heavy metal artist, but like heavy metal, do heavy metal bands even still exist in the mainstream? I don't know, but I don't know. That's already too much time to be talking to spend talking about Lil Nas X on the podcast. But I guess, <laughs> whoo! I, I guess that's a I guess that's a good wrap on that. Um, next, we gonna get into. We'll get into a few trailers. Uh, uh, a few a few new trailers have come out for things. Plus, 
Uh, some new trailers didn't come out for some stuff that's like right around the corner though. So we're going to talk about that next. All right, welcome back. Um, first thing I want to talk about, we're going to talk about the order they plan on releasing, at least as of the time I'm recording this. And the first thing on the list is dropping on April 16th, which is like, which is so right around the corner, I can almost feel it. And that's the new Mortal Kombat movie. I am, I've been a lifelong Mortal Kombat fan. Mortal Kombat's been... Uh, it's been my favorite. It's, it's definitely my favorite fighting game. It's been my favorite fighting game since, I guess it's it's conception since well at least it's Mortal Kombat two. I don't know if I was a big fan of Mortal Kombat one, but in two it was definitely my joint. I, I took a I took a long break from it, from about Mortal Kombat five, and I probably came back at ten for I played a little nine, but I probably came back at ten. We're not talking about the game right now. We're talking about the movie. And the movie so far looks very extremely, oh my goodness, amazing. Like every character I've seen so far looks like an accurate representation. It looks like they really put the money into it. Like I am a huge fan of the original movie. Um, of everything, the character designs, the the, the story, the actors. But, I mean, it was very low budget. I mean, the reptile in that motherfucker was like, what the fuck is this? But, um, I'm still a huge fan of it. I hate the second one. Uh, I think it was called Annihilation. Hate the second one. That was a piece of dog shit and should not be spoken of no more and will not be spoken of anymore on this podcast. But, uh, the, um, the, the, the reboot. Reboot? Is it a reboot? Well, the, the 2021 version of Mortal Kombat uh, looks great every like I said every character looks phenomenal the ones I've heard dialogue from sound like they should sound it was a dope ass scorpion and uh, sub-zero fight which it has to be and it has to be the best it's, it better be the best fight in the movie if, if they got a better fight than that then goddamn y'all did y'all damn thing in this motherfucker because that fight already looked dope so I assume that's the best fight in the show I mean Scorpion and Sub Zero is the biggest rivalry in the Mar I said Marvel in the Mortal Kombat universe, and it's probably one of the biggest rivals in fighting games. Like you know Sub Zero, you know Scorpion, even if you don't play uh, Mortal Kombat. And I don't think I'm trying to think of another rival. Like I don't play a lot of fighting games, so I could be wrong. But like you couldn't count Ren and I said Ren, uh, Ken and Ryu. I don't think they're rivals. I don't think so. I mean I think they're real cool, right? On the day rivals, uh, yeah, I can't. I don't know. I don't know a lot of fighting games, so yeah, hey, send me a message. Um, these are the great on Twitter or Instagram. If, if I'm wrong, if you, there's a bigger rival, then let me know. Uh, but yeah, it looks it looks dope. Like I can't I can't fake it. It looks. I'm so I'm so ready for it. I, I can't be more ready for it. But on that note, we're going to switch over to... That's a HBO Max joint. We're going to switch over to an Amazon Prime joint. And that's uh, the Without Remorse. The um, the military the military movie with... Uh, I, almost said, I almost said Brian. I don't know what name I was about to say. I was about to say Brian T. Jackson. And that ain't even a person. That's Brandon T. Jackson. But it ain't him. It's um Michael B. Jordan. Uh, he's playing a... He's playing up some type of military dude who lost his wife, and now he just be killing niggas, bro. He don't give a damn. Uh, it's one of them things where y'all piss this dude off. Yeah, I know what he could do. Why would you? Why would you piss him off? Like you, you know what he's capable of. You, you got to be an idiot to piss this dude off. But he, um, yeah, it looks dope. I can, it, it, do, it looks. I mean, it's not like. You haven't seen movies like this before, but it also looks like they're definitely doing some. You, I've seen some, at least from what I can tell. I'm not no expert movie guy, even though I like to think I am. Uh, but it looks like they're definitely trying to do some unique things with their action scenes, and I, I hope they do. I hope they do. I, I'm looking forward to this joint. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing Michael B. kick some ass. Huge fan of his. That looks, 
it, it just looks like one of them things where it's like I don't, I don't just do what you're doing, man. As long as it doesn't, as long as it doesn't hit a left turn out of nowhere, it should be pretty good. Uh, uh, after that, we got, and I know I'm missing some things. But these just things I've seen of late. Um, there was a Black Widow trailer that came out pretty recently, and it was pretty good. They even showed some new footage. They showed some some stuff uh, some stuff as her as a kid, and they also showed some flashback stuff from uh, other stuff in the Marvel universe that happened, the MCU that happened already. But it was pretty good. I cannot remember when that's supposed to drop. I want to say August. But if it's August, then I'm doing it out of order anyway because the next one is uh, the Loki show, the Disney Plus joint that's uh, coming out on June 11th, I believe. Uh, they dropped a new trailer for that like a few days ago, and that joint looks absolutely amazing. Now, I've already said on the podcast that I am 100% down to clown with anything the MCU is doing, whether it be TV show or whether it be movie. Like, I'm I'm strapped in. Like, I'm not... I have no doubts. I have no concerns. I already know. After, after seeing WandaVision and so much what I've seen of... Um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which we will get into later. After seeing what I've seen of that so far, like I have no reason to doubt that they are 100% capable of doing the best Marvel stuff they possibly can. Like they know what they're doing and they know where they're going. I, it's like, it's like getting on a bus. It's like getting on a plane. It's like I don't know that I don't know the the pilot, but I trust that he gonna get us there safe. I mean, I just. I've flown so many times and I've never had any type of turbulence. So it's like, I, I like I trust him. He gonna get us that, and I trust Marvel to whatever property they giving us, whatever whatever character, whatever world they introducing, but they gonna do it phenomenally. I just I have at this point I have no reason to doubt him. But after that, the sixth, the next thing I got on the list is Space Jam Two. Which is HBO Max, I believe, also. Uh, that's July 16th. And one thing I will say about Space Jam 2 is I will admit, if you'd have told me this last year, I'd have laughed at If you'd have told me that earlier this year, I would have laughed in your face. I just honestly didn't think this was ever going to get done. I didn't think they were ever going to do a Space Jam 2. Like, I have been, I've had this argument with so many people, bro, telling me, no, nah, man, they doing this, they getting done. I mean, it was, at one point, it was supposed to start Blake Griffin, and, like, it just, I just didn't think they would ever get it done. I had been hearing about them talking about it for so long that I just assumed it was nothing. I just assumed it was rumors, there ain't no final project, but, I mean, LeBron's a producer on this joint, uh, Ryan Coogler, the guy behind uh, the Black Panther movie, not the 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 Marvel Black Panther, not the recent Black Panther, the uh, Judas and the Messiah, not not that Black Panther movie, the the Marvel Black Panther. Uh, he's a producer on this joint too, so uh, it's in good hands. I'm excited. The trailer looks the trailer looks dope. Um, one thing I'm concerned about is did the first movie happen in this canon? Like, do the characters that are involved here remember? I mean, because all you really have to go on is the Looney Tunes and Michael Jordan, but I'm, I doubt Michael Jordan's going to be in this movie. But uh, the Looney Tunes, do they remember playing basketball before? Like, did the first movie happen? Or is this some, or is this like, this is the first time this has happened before, and the first one is like, un, like, I don't want to say uncanon, that's not the word I'm looking for, but it's like, the first movie didn't happen. Kind of like what they're doing with the Suicide Squad, which is another movie, I, I, I could have I could have thought that that would have been a hell of a transition if I had just transitioned like that. But I don't remember when the Suicide Squad movie's coming out. But uh, yeah, Space Jam looks dope. Space Jam. My only concern is like, where does this take place as regard to the first Space Jam? Is is this the first Space Jam? Is this a prequel or is this like, or is this like, um, yeah, the other one we don't know that didn't happen or that happened somewhere else. But this is our shit. This, this is us. This is the new legacy. I hate that subtitle, by the way. A new legacy? What does that mean? Are you making a franchise out of the Space Jam movies now? A new legacy is such a... Whatever. 
But it looks good. I can't wait to see it. It looks dope as hell. Uh, I guess we could talk about the Suicide Squad. I didn't have it on the list, but um, it it looks dope. It looks dope as hell. I can't. I'm really. I think I talked about this last episode. That's probably why I didn't put it on the list. I think I talked about it last episode, but it's just I just I'm just gonna say this as a guy who's probably the only fan of the the original Suicide Squad movie. I'm I'm really enjoying so far everything I've seen from this movie so far. I'm really 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 liking everything that I got to see. So I hope they just keep it up. But it's 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 James Gunn so. He know what the fuck he doing. But, um... Yeah, the Loki trailer. Um, I think that's what I was supposed to talk about first, the Loki trailer. But it look, it looks dope as hell. I can't wait for that. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Because I don't know anything about where Loki is right now. This I just know Owen Wilson looks great. And he's going to be hilarious. I can't wait to see them two together. That's going to be funny as hell. Um... Like that scene at the like, there's a scene in the trailer where he's like, um, Loki's like he's being Loki and he's talking down to people because that's what Loki do best. And he's like, yeah, I see you puppets are playing y'all part in this circus or something. He says something like that. And Owen Wilson's character is like, oh man, that's good, man. You should talk like that. That makes you sound really smart. And Loki's like, I am smart. Like, yeah, yeah, I know, bro, I know. And Loki's like. What? what are you trying to say I'm not smart, bro? Like what? What the fuck are you trying to say? It's it's a really good scene. It's it's a great scene. It's a funny scene with minimum dialogue. That's what makes it that makes it so funny because they wasn't it wasn't a bunch of written jokes. It was like I don't know. I'm I'm looking super forward to that. I, I guess that's what I guess that's why I went on a tirade of uh just Marvel has they got my loyalty. Like, I've always been a Marvel guy, but as far as the movies and the TV shows, like, I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt right out the gate. Like, I'm just assuming this is going to be good, and I'm tuning in. Because just like with the movies, no matter what the characters were, no matter what part of the universe it was happening in, I had to see all the movies. Because I didn't want to be cut out at any point. I didn't want to miss anything. So I was always in that thing. I got whatever movie it was, I was going to see it. Because I don't want to miss nothing. I don't want to miss no detail. I don't want to be confused on nothing. I want to know all the plot points. And that's how it will be with this TV show. It just so happens that the first two out the gate have been phenomenal. So they don't have a miss yet. They two for two. Like, so it, it, it just... It helps that when I give Marvel, the MCU, my, my undying loyalty, that they reward it with great content. Because they could shit on me and just put out bullshit, and it's like, ugh. But, yeah, I, I guess moving on. I guess the last thing I want to touch about in this segment of the show um, is my hero, my hero academia. Uh, we're gonna fill out, we're gonna fill out music quota and our anime quota this episode. Cause I be slacking, I be slacking. Yeah, I need to call me out when I'm slacking. I can't just do comic book shit. It's whatever I find entertaining. So it's just comic book is comic book shit is the hot shit right now. So, uh, My Hero Academia, I, I watched, I finally watched the movie that came out last year, like late last year, uh, I think it's called Heroes Rising or something like that, but it was the one, up. Oh, spoilers for that by the way, um, if you haven't caught up on, there's only two episodes, well at the time I'm recording there's only two episodes, uh, of season five of My Hero, if you're not caught up to that, and if you haven't seen the Hero Rising movie, I'm about to spoil I'm not going to spoil that, but I am going to talk about some things that happened. I'm not going to give you the final point. But this is a movie where uh, Deku and Bakugo. Ba Bakugo? Am I saying that? Baku I hope I'm saying that right. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, they team up to uh, to save an island. And it's a dope-ass fight scene. And both of them look very impressive in that. And, uh, it was just it was just a well to good, it was a well put together movie. It was phenomenal. I got... High praise for that joint. Definitely, if you're a My Hero fan, you need to check that movie out. But season five. Um, there's only two episodes in. Spoiler. Spoiler alert for the first two episodes of season five. of spo Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. For the first two episodes of, of season five of My Hero Academia. Um, you, uh... It, 
it starts off. It's, it's starts off, it pretty much starts off where it left. Where uh, Endeavor, the new number one, is all banged up from his fight with that new 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 move new move no move. Uh, he's all banged up from it. He's still recovering from that. Uh, oh, fuck, I forgot his damn name. Uh, is the guy I like too? Uh, the bird guy, the number two. I he's one of my favorites, and I can't remember his damn Hawks. Uh, Hawks is um he's still recovering too. But it turns out that he um the I don't know the government I don't some important people up top gave him a mission to infiltrate the League of Villains. So he's pretending to be a bad guy so he can get in closer to them and see what's going on with them. Um, but of course nobody can know but like the people that gave him the job and him. So he's got to play both sides. Now he's got to be a double agent, which I'm cool with it because I just want to see more Hawks. Hawks is out of the heroes, like not the, not the kids that are still in school, out of the heroes. He's my favorite. I love, 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 love Hawks. But yeah, uh, he's, still, he's still recovering from that. The league's still doing their thing. Deku's still trying to figure out this whole, uh, what am I looking at? Uh, how do I, this whole lineage of, of of one for all users he's still trying to figure he's still trying to put the pieces together on that and how that happens and how he's supposed to use that shit to get stronger but um the second episode leads i mean it ends with they're going to be fighting or they're going to be competing oh maybe not fighting they're going to be at least competing against other students from their school like a class of below them or next to them or because they're one a and they're going to be going against one b i don't know if that means they're below them or they're just the next room over like we're 222 they're 223 um but yeah i'm super excited for it i, I can't i can't wait it looks it looks dope the, the students over there look dope i can't wait to see what they got uh it's just it cracks me up bro because it's like and me, and me and my brother was talking about it and he's like he said one of the things that pissed him off about my hero is that these kids go through so much the one a, the class of 1a they go through so much shit bro and like a lot of them deserve to be promoted out of just being regular ass students bro which he right because um i can't fucking remember that i'm terrible with names if you know me when it comes to anime i'm terrible with names unless they got like American sounding names like Full Metal Alchemist, like Ed and Al and, and Mustang and excuse me, um, yeah, shit like that. Roy, you know what I'm saying? Like regular American sounding name, but I'm terrible with it. But uh, I'm I'm better at like, yeah, I'm better at identifying them through their powers. So it's like the fast guy. Uh, who else? It was three of them, bro. It was the fast guy. I think it was the dude who used fire. This shit happened so long ago. The dude who uses fire and ice, and then Deku, I think, beat uh, Hero Killer Stain. Just them three, just students, like not even the top three in a class. Uh, beat beat a guy who was killing heroes for fun. I don't want to say he was killing heroes for fun. He wasn't doing it for fun. He was. He had a purpose. He had a meaning. He had a mission. I wouldn't say it was for fun. But what I mean by that is like. He was killing them like it wasn't nothing. He was taking them out, and these kids beat them. So they definitely deserve to be promoted out, you know, past just being regular ass students. But I, I mean, I, I get it. Um, I, I'm enjoying it. I mean, I'm loving the shit out of this show. I'm so happy it's back. I can't wait to see more. Uh, I can't wait to see what happens when they go up against One B. But I don't know, bro. If 1B, if this is a competition, bro, like if 1B is good enough to compete with 1A, it's bullshit. And I'll tell you why. Because what I was saying was 1A didn't been through some shit, bro. Like they, they constantly just get set up for failure, bro. Like they constantly get put in these situations where it's like, this is over their pay grade, bro. And they keep succeeding. They just keep, like, so if 1B is just as good as 1A, what the fuck 1B been at? And why am I just not seeing them? What they been on? They been on a fucking field trip or something? But anywho, that's. I think that uh, that wraps it up. I'm, I can't wait. I can't wait to episode three. It's gonna be dope as hell. And uh, yeah, that's it. I guess next 
that's the end of this segment. We didn't talk about all the trailers and all the upcoming stuff. Next next segment is gonna be everybody's favorite segment. The reason why we all are here for real, for real, and that's uh the Falcon and Winter Soldier. So I'll be right back. <clears throat> and we're back. Okay. It's time to get into the nitty gritty of it all. It's time to talk about everybody's favorite segment on the podcast. And that's the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And we're about to get into episode four titled The World is Watching. Y'all yeah, realize we only got two more episodes of the Winter Soldier, bro. Two more episodes? Every you tell me everything? Because I doubt this is getting a second season. And not because it's not good. I just don't think any of the shows are getting a second season. Any of these Disney Plus shows are done right now. I don't think any of them are getting a second season. Because I don't think they're meant to have a second season. I don't even look at them as TV shows. I look at them as like... Uh, is miniseries the word? What do you call them... What do you call those things that run on a network and they're just specifically this amount of episodes and that's it? Like, I think it's called a miniseries, but I'm not sure. But I, I just think these are meant to be one-offs. I don't think they're meant to have second seasons at all. I, I, I mean that for WandaVision. I mean that for Falcon and Winter Soldier. And I mean that for Loki and whatever other shows. that. Because I think these movies are just, I think they're meant to, be, how do I put it? And I think I've talked about this before in the podcast, but I think they're just meant to be like, here's what these characters were up to between movies. You know, here's what's happened after Endgame, but before whatever the first movie of whatever phase, phase four. And we in phase four, or we in phase five. I think we in phase four. Like, here's what's been happening to all your favorite heroes since they since Endgame was over. I think that's what I think it's just meant to tell you this just to catch you up on what they've been up to because uh, like for instance Scarlet Witch or Wanda is supposed to be in the next Spider-Man and the next Doctor Strange but if you don't see WandaVision you're not gonna know what the fuck she's been up to she's gonna be way her personality and everything should be way different she didn't been through some shit and if you ain't seen WandaVision we're not about to talk about it now you missed out you need to go cop that shit but uh yeah, her whole demeanor should be way different. She didn't just dealt with some real shit in her show. And I think that's the point. I think we, I don't think we needed to see a WandaVision movie. I think this TV format is perfect for it. Because here's the thing. If it's on Disney+, Plus, so if people not really fucking with it, you can go, okay, they must not fuck with these. I, I feel like a testing ground. For, for like one... For like giving ma the characters who aren't major role players in the MCU, like here's what they up to. You know what I'm saying? People we can't give solo movies to. Here's what they up to. And two, it feels like, what if we want to introduce some new characters? And here's a good way to do it. And we ain't got to worry about spending a whole movie trying to give the character a backstory. We'll just introduce him in this TV show. So when he comes to the movie, you get it. So if Agatha pops up in in anything from now on, you don't need to. You don't need to introduce her backstory and explain where she been or what she from or what she about or her motivations. We know because we've seen WandaVision. So, I'm just... It sucks that there's only two episodes left. I said all that to just... For no reason. Because I was just mumbling on. I just... It sucks that we only got two episodes left and it's wrapped up. But my point was... Is that I don't think there's going to be a second season. Because I don't think there needs to be. I don't need to see another season of WandaVision. What would it even be about? Like, what would the second season of that even be about? Like, what's the point? Um, and I think the same will go for the rest of these. But, uh, yeah, it's... I, and I believe I said this last episode, too. But one thing... After watching episode four, one thing I can 100% agree with or state, 100% state, that both WandaVision and... The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. On episodes three to four, they just took off. Like they just took just took the fuck off, bro. Like episodes one and two were cool. They were great. I enjoyed for both series. I enjoyed the first two episodes, but three and four just turned the shit up to eleven and did not turn back, bro. It's it's insane, bro. These who 
ooh, this episode four was some shit. That episode three was some shit. Uh, four is it starts off with um Bucky and Wakanda, which I didn't think because you know at the end of the last in, in this episode three, he uh oh I cannot remember her name and I'm so sorry because she's such a good character, but uh, old girl from the. Uh, I like to call them because I don't know how to pronounce what they are. I like to call them the uh, the Wakanda Secret Service. That's what I like to call them. But it's a bunch of um, it's a bunch of warriors whose job it is to protect the king. Uh, one of them shows up, and they talk to Bucky at the end of the episode. So the episode starts with them talking again, but it starts with. I think four, five years ago. I don't remember. It might have been longer than that. But it shows them in Wakanda, and it shows her using the trigger words, the Winter Soldier words on him, and showing that he it don't work on him no more. He's cured now. And he was even like, "Look, don't don't say those words. I'm a Winter Soldier it out, and I'm gonna fuck some shit up." And it, it just goes to show how strong the the Wakanda Secret Service is. Is she, she's by herself? It's just her and Bucky. And she's like, bro, I'm not going to let you hurt nobody. Don't worry about it. Like, she herself is like, yeah, I could, I could take the Winter Soldier. Like, I'm 100% sure I could take the Winter Like, But it makes sense because th them chicks, bro, like, they ain't no joke. First off, Wakanda ain't no joke. They ain't no joke, period. Like, the fighters in Wakanda, bro, are that. And they could probably beat the, beat the shit out of anybody from any other nation that ain't super powered. But... These are the top of the top. Like I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. I can't verify this. This is my own opinion from what I've read and what I've learned. I'm pretty sure that anybody that's in the what kind of Secret Service has the ability to take over Black Panther's mantle if if they want to, or if they earn it, or if they need to. Not to say that they would like kill whoever Black Panther is at the time, but I'm saying they have the abilities and the skills and to do it. Like they could do it if they need to. That's I'm just saying that's how good they are. They could probably, probably one on one, they'll give whoever the Black Panther is without his suit and his power. They'll, they probably could win. They could probably definitely take him. But yeah, they show Bucky's now free from his words, and he's just, and and I keep saying this every episode because I truly believe it. But this 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 Falcon and the Winter Soldier show is really giving Sebastian Stan a chance to act. Like he's really getting to be different things in his in his in his show that he hasn't been in the MCU at all because for most of the MCU except for except for early on of except for the first Captain America which nigga that came out so long ago I don't even remember but except for that he's just been like a a robotic dude he's just been like a, a killing machine he's he's either been a killing machine or he's been depressed about being a killing machine. Those were his two things. Those were his two sides. He's either walking around mindless killing people or he's super sad about walking around being mindless and killing people. But now he gets to he gets to crack jokes. He gets to be upset. He gets to be angry. He gets to be sad, depressed. He gets to be real a real human. And he gets to emote. And you get to see him going through frustration. You get to see him being happy about things. You get to see him expressing himself. And it's just it's one of the best parts of the show. It's it really is one of my favorite parts. And I'm just happy he gets to do that because I mean you just really didn't get to see his acting ability until then. But um one of the things I'm most concerned on about this show, and I was just talking about this earlier, is that it's it's hard to tell where this show's going. Like what's gonna happen to Falcon at the end of this show? I believe I don't know what's gonna happen to Bucky. But I'm pretty sure at the end of this show, Falcon is just going to be Captain America. It's, I just don't see any other thing making any sense. I mean, if the shield somehow gets destroyed, that'd be ass. It'd be like, there ain't no more... Really? There ain't no more shield? That's like... I don't think that's what's going to happen. I, I don't see... Any, there's nobody else. Because... What's his name? John Walker not gonna be the he not gonna be the Winter Soldier when this I mean I said Winter Soldier. He's not gonna be Captain America when this is over. I seriously doubt that. Like, we'll get into some stuff he did in this episode in a minute, but when I, I even before he did this, I was like, he probably not gonna be Winter Soldier at the end of this. Damn it, I said it again. He's not gonna be uh 
uh, Captain America by the end of this episode. He's just going to be U.S. agent, which is like a Captain America knockoff. But, or a villain. I think uh, I think U.S. agent is sometimes a bad guy, too. But, uh, yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't know where this show is going. I don't know what's going to happen to Sharon, what's going to happen to Baron Zemo. I, I don't know. It's really hard to tell. And it's, it's kind of funny because it's like at the end of a... Well, not at the end, but you kind of knew where WandaVision was going. Even if you didn't know the plot, you knew that, like, whatever, however this ends, bro, it's going to somehow translate into her, her Spider-Man appearance or her uh, Doctor Strange appearance. I don't know how, but somehow it's going to be linked to that. And I do think it was. I think the ending was definitely tied to, to at, least, at least, I'm not going to say how, because I don't want to, like, if you haven't seen it, I'm not here to spoil WandaVision for you. But uh, we gonna we gonna we definitely finna spoil some Winter Soldier and the Falcon for damn sure. I I don't think I gave you a spoiler warning at the beginning, but spoiler warning, my nigga. Um, but yeah, I think her show definitely translated into. I mean, I did, I think you can see where it ends and you can see where it's going. But I don't. I can, there's so many characters in here, but I'm just like I have no idea what's gonna happen to them. I don't know where this is going. I don't know what what is this leading into a movie. I was finna say, I don't know what movie it's leading into, but is it even leading into a movie? Maybe it's leading into another show. Oh, I got, I got no clue. So I, I don't know. I just, all I know is Sam, Sam better be, he better be Captain America by the end of this. And cause here's my thing. At first it was just, at first I was like, he better at least have the shield by the end of this, which I, I, I really think he will. But the thing is, you can't have the shield and not be Captain America. There has to be a Captain America. There has to be. Somebody has to represent that symbol. And I th I think that's what Sam's main... Uh, what's what I'm looking for? I think that's his main... Um, his main motivation for giving up the shield. He's like, if I put it in the museum, then anybody got to worry about that symbol. That symbol will just be in the museum forever. Because you can't... It's... <sighs> Being Captain America is a tough gig, bro. It's a tough... Like, the reason why Steve Rogers was the first Captain America is because they couldn't find somebody with his heart. It was something special about Steve Rogers. That's why they gave him the serum. You can't just give that shit to anybody because you see what happens when you just give the super serum to any motherfucker. Shit goes wrong. Like... Steve Rogers was special. There was something special about him, so that's why they gave it to him. And and it's just, I believe Sam can see that. And I was just talking, like I said, I was just talking to my brother about that. And it's like Captain America represents something different to everybody that sees it. To some people, it's like it's the symbol of America, man. It's what America is and what America does great. To some people, it's like it's a symbol of oppression, man. It's a symbol of people thinking they're better than people. And and using that to keep them people down. To some people, that's a symbol of that's an old era, but that's how that's how old superheroes used to be. That's how super like nowadays superheroes got to get their hands dirty, bro. You can't be squeaky clean like Captain America was. Like, gotta have a little dirt on you if you want to be a hero in these times. Uh, so it, it represents something different to every person. It's a mentor. It's an enemy. It's a it's a it's a bygone era. Like um like she said in this episode, it's a bygone era. It's, it's old. It's the, it's the past. So, um, it's different. It's different to everybody. And I just, well, one thing I will say is that um, Zemo be dropping facts. Because Zemo was talking about, he was talking about, because you know, he, he hates superpower people. Like, he just, I just get them all, get rid of them all. If I could kill every single one of them, I would. But uh, he be, he be, uh, he be spitting facts. And he was talking about, he was talking about supremacy. And it was a super interesting conversation because there's something about Zemo that's just fascinating, bro. Like, he's just... It's kind of hard to hate him. Because he not... I mean, he, he does fucked up shit. But he's not necessarily wrong. And that's that's the hardest people to... That's the hardest people to love or the hardest people to hate for some people. It's like... I get why he's doing what he's doing. I don't agree with how he's doing it, but I get why he's doing it. And yeah, that's how I feel about it. Like I get like super soldiers are a problem. You can't have super soldiers. Like 
it, it breeds superiority. I mean, supers in the name. So you get people who you you get people who want to create these. You want to create like you're either a super soldier and you already want to impose your will on people, or you are making super soldiers because you want an army so you can impose your will on people. Like the only the only super soldier, and they said in the show, it's like, what about Captain America? I mean, what about Steve Rogers? And it's like Steve Rogers was was the was the exemption to the rule. But he fucking Steve Rogers, bro. Like, the and, and Zemo even says, we haven't had another... That nigga was born in the 50s, bro. And we haven't had another Steve Rogers since the 50s. I think it was the 50s. I think he was born in the 50s. We haven't had another Steve Rogers since, bro. That should tell you something. Like, that was a once-in-a-lifetime uh, person. Nobody else needs a super serum but him. So... I, Zemo be Zemo be spitting facts, but it, he's making it hard to hate him. He really is. Um, uh, Sean Carter was in this joint again. Uh, something's going on with her. Something. I think. I think with it will in Majapur, with all these people being taken out with uh, uh, that lady who's kind of powerful, who seemed like she had some power. And then the scientist that was making the serum. At first to me, it appeared that Zemo was trying to take out anybody who knew about the secret serum. The, the, the super soldier serum. Um, because he hates super soldiers. So I, I got to I gotta get rid of any trace of this. So nobody can redo this shit again. Because that's what's going to happen in the, in the first place. Is that If I take these niggas out, somebody else is going to redo it. So just get rid of all traces of it. Which I get. But um, I I also thought maybe he was trying to make a move to be power broker. So he was taking out everybody that would be in his way. I don't know if I still believe that or not. But something's going on with Sharon Carter, though. She, she seems to have a whole lot of power. And she... They, the only thing they say about her is she be selling... She be selling art. She be selling art on the black market. Like... You know, a whole lot. I mean, I get that there's a lot of money, like stupid amounts of money in that, but you can't. Like she says, yeah, I got a couple satellites I can use. A couple satellites. I don't. I don't know if I want to say she the power broker, bro, but I feel like she got some. She might be up there, bro. Like I don't. She ain't something up with her. Something. Cause, for instance, when they first showed up and they were like, "Hey, we got Zemo here," and they're like, "What the fuck you free Zemo for, bro? Like all the bullshit he's been through." It's like, well, we need him to help us find the, the super serum, the super soldier serum. And she tells him, she's like, yeah, I need to just, yeah, I need to back off this, bro. Yeah, I need to just let this, yeah, I need to let this one go. This ain't a fight worth fighting. But now, and this, that was like episode, I think that was last episode. Episode three. But in this episode, she's like, hey, yeah, y'all need to see this out. Yeah, y'all need to see this one to the end, bro. Y'all need to really get to the bottom of this. It's like, hold on now. You were just telling us we need to leave this alone, but now you're telling us we need to see this out to the end? I, something up with her, bro. I don't know if she good or bad. I don't know what's going on. I just know she up to something for damn sure. She definitely up to something. Um, yeah, I... I... I'm trying to figure out whether uh, the, the whether I agree with the Flag Smashers leader. Um... I mean, I guess I guess I'm like I'm where Sam is. I'm like I I get what you're doing and I, I fuck with it. I can't fuck with how you're doing it though. Because you're killing innocent people and that's like that's not what's up. But I mean and and I'll say this, because this is a theme that I've been I've been noticing and I haven't really talked about it yet. This is a theme I've been noticing in the MCU that's been in it since Shit, nigga, the first Captain America movie, but this is a, a running theme in the MCU is the little guy versus the big guy. A lot of David and Goliaths go on in the MCU, and this is just one example with uh, the, the the flag smashers leader. Hers is all about we're being we're being oppressed by big governments and big big uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Big sovereignties, big uh, supremacies. These large corporations get together and they show, they tell us how we're going to live. 
the the, the big guy shitting on the little guy. And um, that's that's also present in I mean in this very show with with uh, Falcon. Or even though he's a big time hero and he's famous and he, people recognize him in the streets, he couldn't even get a bank loan. It's like the big guy shitting on a little guy again. Because even though it's like, or even though you super famous, you still ain't big enough to fuck with us. So uh, nah, you ain't getting a loan. Step back, get back, get back, homie. Get back up, back up, back up. Uh, another one is obviously Captain America's whole thing is he's looking out for the little guy. That's his whole thing, obviously. Um... Where else did I see it at? Uh, shit. And the first, the second and the third Iron Man's was about a little guy sticking up for the big guy. I mean, uh, I said that all wrong. A little guy fighting the big guy. Because um, in, in two, in Iron Man 2, it was about that, that uh, he was like a competitor of Tony Stark. So he was trying to build his own Iron Man suits. And... Uh, it was, he was just, he was, I don't know, jealous, maybe it's the right word, I don't know, but Iron Man was like, not Iron Man, Tony Stark was like constantly like shitting on him, so he just, he felt like shit because he couldn't compete, so he felt like he was a little guy fighting Stark, who's a big guy, but at the same move, in the same time in the same movie, he teams up with the, the whip dude, who his, his father somehow got wronged by Stark's father, and he got like, I don't remember what it was, I cannot remember. Somehow, it, but it was it was a it was a little guy versus a big guy thing. Like they, he he did his father did something, and then he got shitted on by 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 the government. So uh, Whip Dude was was pissed off for that. And uh, in the third Iron Man movie, the villain happened to be a guy that uh, Tony Stark allegedly shitted on, being a big wig. He shitted on the little guy uh, when. At a New Year's party, I think, uh, the the dude was trying to, the guy who becomes the villain was trying to talk to Stark. And he was like, hey, I got a brilliant idea for a thing that we could do. And Stark was like, all right, bro, meet me on the roof at midnight. We could talk about it. And like Stark never went up there, of course, because Stark was probably somewhere getting some ass. So dude was like, okay, I'm the little guy. And you're not like, you, you picking on me. Like you, you uh, I feel like I'm being bullied by the big guy. So then he ends up doing his own thing and making power people later on down the life. He's up making power people and that was his thing. Uh, who else? Um, shit, Ant-Man's thing was sticking it to the man. He ended up, in the first one, he ended up in jail because he was working, for, I think he was working for a company that was just extorting, extorting customers. Like they were just robbing them blind and he exposed that and he took money from the company and put it in the bank accounts of all these people he ended up going to jail for that so there was another instance of the little guy fighting the big guy but he also is can also be a little guy and a big guy too so that's a physical that's not metaphorical though my shit metaphorical i got i got metaphors another example of the little guy fighting the big because it's just all if you just really look at it it's all over the mcu um who else? I can't think of nothing off the top of my head, but I know I'm gonna probably think of something later. But we we gonna we gonna move on. We gotta keep we gotta keep moving on. Um, but I I do agree with uh Carrie 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 Morgan Thou, I think it's how you say her last name. I I, I mean she right bro like because the thing is is that when the snap when when the snap happened in that five year span of half the population being gone, people were forced to work together. People from rival nations, people from different ideologies, different religions, different social classes, they were forced to work together because everybody was on a level playing field. So like people you never thought to work together had to come together. But then uh, Hulk does his snap and brings everybody back. So then Everything's starting to go back to the way it was, where the big guy's picking on the little guy, and she's like, "Nah, man, we were we were good during that 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 uh that five year span. We were good. Things were great. The world was a good place. Y'all coming back, and y'all want to put borders down and start separating people again. Y'all want this segregation shit, bro. And so you can treat people differently, and that's not what we want. And I mean, she right. Like segregation's always bad." 
It's never a time when it's like, whoo, thank goodness for that segregation, bro. So she just, and apparently they were like forced, they were like forced from homes or forced out of countries or some shit like that. Because they even call, um, when, when the Falcon was talking to that, I guess he was a teacher. And he was like, he was like, hey, we're looking for this lady. She was a refugee. And he's like, we're not refugees, bro. We don't got nothing to, um, we're not seeking refuge from anything. We just, we lost our country. I forgot what he called, displaced citizens or something like that. But he's like, yeah, we're not, like, refugees meaning our country's like at war or something. Or we're being oppressed in our country and we're fleeing from that. We're not fleeing from anything, bro. Our country just not our country anymore. So that was that. Um, I don't know. I kind of said I will. I saw this coming though. Uh, John Walker losing it. He, I, I, it does once again spoilers. Spoiler alert! Because this is a huge spoiler right here. Spoiler alert! So if you haven't seen episode four. Of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I'm finna spoil the ending of it right here. Right now. So. I don't. So, I don't know. Just spoilers. But um. They killed off Battlestar. Uh, I, and that sucks bro. Cause. I mean. That's not like I loved him as a character. But. He did seem to ground. John Walker. Whenever John Walker was finna fly off the handle. He definitely seemed to be. Hey, bro, look, chill. Calm down, bro. It's cool. I think that was... I think that was his center. His center, not center. Center. And he lost that, and I just think... Yeah, he finna go off the rocker. I mean, he, he killed the dude in broad daylight. Like, violently murdered a dude. Like... It's... It sucks, bro. And... I just... Man, I didn't think he had to die, though. I didn't think he was going to die. I thought that dude, like, I thought that dude went on to do stuff in comic books. So it, it kind of sucks that he died. But I don't know. that There's something there's something truly weird. I will say this about, because I've seen a lot of Captain America stuff in my day, because he's always been a prominent character in Marvel. So he's always there somewhere. I've seen a lot of Captain America shit. I don't think I've ever seen blood on the shield before. And it was a lot. Like, I don't think Captain America's ever used the shield to kill a person. Like, he's smacked the shit out of people in, in fights, but, like, not in any way where it would be considered murder. It's just, God, it was such a, such a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Such a, um, a infamously iconic symbol. Seeing him standing out with the, with the blood, it was hella blood on that shield, bro. Cause he's just trying to murder the dude with that motherfucker. And that's that's one of. Them. But even before he did that, I was sure he wasn't gonna be Captain America by the end of this show. It's just, it, it, it's too, it's too much. It's too much for him. It's too much for anybody but Steve Rogers, bro. And sometimes it was too much for Steve Rogers. But it, it's it's too much. It, like being Captain America is too much for any person, bro. It's too big of a it's too big of a burden. Like I was saying earlier, it's like that's too much of a symbol. And it's a symbol to everybody. Not just not even just people in this country. It's a symbol to everyone. People outside of this country, whether it be a positive symbol or a negative symbol, it's a symbol. And that's a lot to weigh on somebody. That's like that's like drafting a quarterback and saying, Hey bro, we need to go to the Super Bowl this year. It's like, damn, that's a lot of pressure. But yeah, that 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 sucks. That sucks. That sucks that the Battle Star dude battles. I think it was Battle Star. It sucks that the Battle Star dude had to die. Cause I, like I said, I'm gonna say I liked him, but I didn't dislike him. He was much. He was needed in the show. He wasn't like a ugh. Why is he even here? He was definitely needed. He was. He was. He was fine. He was good. But yeah, I, th I think that's. I think that wraps up the show. I, I think. I think we're done. Um, yeah, I think that's all my topics. Uh, I'm glad y'all stopped by. I'm glad y'all hung out with me. Um, I'm not sure how long this episode is. I wasn't... I try to keep track, but... This may be one of my shorter ones, hopefully. But if we get out of here on time. 
Uh, thanks for y'all for coming by. I appreciate y'all. Y'all know I love y'all. Thank you for hanging out with me. Um, thank you for sitting through all of my ramblings because Lord knows I get my ramble on. I get my ramble on. Uh, yeah, but I love y'all, man. And I hope y'all having a great day. And I hope it continues to be great because y'all are great. And y'all deserve great things. But on that note, I'm out of here, y'all. I love y'all. Peace.